Hey everyone. Okay, so today we're going to be doing something a little different. We have a very special guest with us today. His name is George Falcione from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Hi, George. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so tell everyone about the Grand Circle Tour podcast. What do you guys do? What do you guys discuss? Where can we find you? All right. Well, the Grand Circle Tour uh, podcast uh, came about where uh, a group of us, actually, we weren't friends starting out with, you know, we kind of stumbled upon each other that shared the same passion of Disney that we wanted to tell our stories and tell Disney through our own eyes, through our perspective. So, you know, we kind of came up with this quirky idea of, you know, you take the Grand Circle Tour around the Magic Kingdom and it just fit in well. You know, our uh, guests or listeners are called uh, our passengers. It fits well with the theme. And uh, we just talk about it. Um, we usually do a show um, every week. Now it's going into uh, two shows a week. We do our regular show and um, an extra show, which we call our detour show, as for the theming of the Grand Circle Tour. Um, you can pretty much find us on all media platforms. On uh, Facebook, you can visit us at the Grand, uh, the Grand Circle Tour Podcast Magic Ticket Holders, and also on Twitter and Instagram at gctpodcast.com. Not com, I'm sorry. <laughs> just <laughs> at podcast. Great, great. And, um, and also, just so everyone is aware, I'll also put links in the description for his pod, the podcast, the YouTube channel, all of it in the description below. So make sure you check them out and subscribe to them. So in t so today's episode, I usually do all Disneyland. The bulk of my content is all Disneyland related. But um, Walt Disney World is actually George's home park. So I thought we'd mix it up a little bit and we'll talk about the Walt Disney World Resort today. So the first topic today we're going to talk about is the Epcot changes. So a few weeks ago, Disney announced uh, or Disney gave us some concept art for the brand new Epcot entryway and the play pavilion. What are your thoughts on both of these things, George? Okay, first, when I saw the uh, concept art that was released for the main entrance of Epcot, I was ecstatic for it because it kind of brought that original Epcot look where you have a um, sort of like a park feel, like I'm starting to see more greenery, more trees, you know, more walking space. Um, nothing against um, the, the Leave a Legacy uh, at the beginning of the park. Um, I know a lot of people have a sentimental value to it because they actually have uh, their pictures placed there and everything. Um, but to me, it kind of looks like, <laughs> and I don't want any haters, forgive me, but it kind of looks like <laughs> a giant graveyard. <laughs> you know, it does actually. It really does. Like the tombstones. Yes. Totally. Yep. And it just takes up a whole lot of room you know, where you're trying to finagle through the park, trying to go around guests. So with the main concept, it kind of gives you a lot of breathing room yeah. for, you know, for people to walk. And it, it just gives a sort of a um, organic feel is what I like to say. It has like an organic feel that leads into future world and then beyond that world showcase. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of trees, flowers, foliage, whatever you want to call it. Any Disney park, if they want to add more trees and all that good stuff to it, I'm always supportive of it. I think it adds so much to these parks. It really does beautify them a lot. So the entry for Epcot, the new one, looks fantastic. I love what and, they're doing with it. And not to kind of segue off of Walt Disney World, but that is the one thing in comparison of like apples and oranges that I love about Disneyland Park is they have the trees. They have that, that almost that Grand Central Park sort of feel. Yeah, and definitely. It, yeah. So I'm glad it's coming to Epcot. I'm glad that my one of my parks are getting some love with some trees. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I'm happy too. And you know what? That If I noticed correctly, the uh, there's a statue, right? Or a monument in the new concept art that harkens back to old Epcot, right? If I'm not mistaken. It, I, it's the I, old, I, like, spires? Yeah, I, I believe so, yeah. If you actually look... Uh, closely like in the, the new concept art there is something that they're placing and it does look like it's playing uh, homage to the uh, the original look of Epcot. It's awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
What, what are your thoughts on this play pavilion that they announced? I, I guess it's replacing Wonders of Life, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's replacing the uh, the Wonders of Life pavilion that held um, certain attractions like um, Cranium Command, uh, The Making of Me, and there was a Body Wars. There was like three attractions in there. And now with the concept art that they released for that, which that threw me off completely. I, I thought... <laughs> I thought that building was just going to sit there for the end of time, <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you. But based on the look of it, it does seem interesting because I do know that Interventions East and West, based on the concept art of the entrance to Epcot, they're removing those. So they needed something that's going to replace the interactive part for Future World. So... I personally feel going into Interventions, it's a bit outdated. So I am very excited to see what the new technology that Disney has of what it's going to become. Because kind of looking at the, the, the photograph, there's, I believe there's a cinema and there's certain other retrospects that actually look like mini buildings within a building. So it's almost like you go into a building but you're outside and there's different other buildings that you go into depending on what kind of interactive experience you want to have. Yeah. And that's kind of a cool thing. They can do a lot with that. I wonder if they're going to use maybe protect uh, projection mapping to map out like a, like a sky or something interesting like that. That's what I was thinking because you could kind of take this one or two ways there. You could see some Disney characters, you know, throughout the image mingling with guests Right. So I'm wondering, did they just use that as a reference that you could actually meet the characters, like as a special meet and greet? Or are they going to actually have animated projections walking around? It, it kind of seems like animated projections, because usually with Disney concept art, when they do the concept art, they'll actually have the costumed characters in the art as costumed characters it really looks like they're, they're representing these characters as is, as their cartoon form. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is some sort of holographic or projection, this new technology uh, that they're utilizing in this area to have them actually like mingle with the crowd. I think it's pretty awesome. Yes. And it's just one of those things that they didn't give a whole lot of detail on it, but it, it saves a lot just in one image. And it's almost like Disney wants us to play the guessing game, play 20 questions until they actually officially announce it. Yeah, no, I'm definitely. Really excited to see what they're going to, what the Wonders of Life uh, pavilion is going to become with the play and the interactive play. Yeah. And I mean, from what I've heard from, from people that are, you know, that go to Walt Disney World a lot, that whole area, um, and you touched upon it, is pretty outdated. So this is a plus for you guys. This is exciting. This will revitalize that whole area again, you know? Yeah, as far as like the park itself with Epcot, Future World is the part that needed the most. Um, just as you know, with um, Disneyland's Tomorrowland, you know, oh, yeah. the future aspect of the park is <laughs> the <need a> revamp. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah, I am glad that Epcot's getting some love. And then on top of that, getting like the, uh, the Guardians of the uh, Galaxy roller coaster. I'm uh, very excited about that because, um, I was out in California for the uh, Summer of Heroes with the, the premiere of uh, Mission Breakout. So I'm excited to see what the Disney World side is going to do with the Guardians. Yeah, and you know, it's actually, I think going forward, Disney World is going to get more and more Marvel stuff because I think the contract for Universal only pertains to the characters they have on there. Like, you know, uh, the X-Men, I think they have like Wolverine, Hulk things of that nature, Dr. Doom. But as the MCU moves forward into their uh, cosmic phase, you know, uh, a lot of these characters are not represented at Universal. So I think they're free to use in Florida, um, like Guardians. So with all these movies coming out now um, in this next phase of the MCU, you guys might see more Marvel come to Florida. I hope we do. <laughs> Because I also have a theory, um, which I'll touch upon on another uh, segment that we'll talk about, that I also think also has a key part into the future for Marvel and the Disney parks. Nice. 
Nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is Disney's Hollywood Studios. And, you know, it's no secret Disney's Hollywood Studios is going through a major, major makeover right now with Galaxy's Edge, Mickey's Runaway Railway. You guys just opened Toy Story Land. Um, this is a big theme departure from what was before, which was more about Hollywood, the physical place, and movie making, behind the scenes magic. And it seems like they're changing directions into more of a you know, walking into the worlds that Hollywood created. So you'll go in and you'll, you'll experience Star Wars as is. You'll experience Toy Story as is. What are your thoughts on this new theme direction they're going in? I love it. I, I from the very beginning, I enjoyed the studios. Um, I kind of put it in a category with uh, DCA. I call them the little parks that could. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> because they're striving for an identity. It's they have a title, a very strong title for a theme park name, but the parks aren't fully up to their potential. So as far as it's still being called the studios, I don't have a problem with, but I do love that rather it be about behind the scenes of the movie making process, which is very interesting. I'm a huge fan of that. But as far as like, as a theme park goes, I think I would personally leave that for Universal, have that, have them handle that retrospect of behind the scenes and movie making and everything. Disney has this wonderful gift that they have so many stories that from school, paper to screen to real life that you could literally immerse yourself and walk into. And I think it's just a shame that up until this point, you're learning the behind the scenes, but me personally, I want to live the experience. Exactly. So with the start of with Toy Story Land and now Galaxy's Edge, I can't wait to see that for me, it's just the, the tipping point of what's going to happen with uh, Hollywood Studios, because in my opinion, I also think that uh, Indiana Jones is pretty much going to be on the horizon, and I think that would be perfect there, because a lot of people are saying, oh, it was rumored to be an animal kingdom, but I mean, if you clear out Echo Lake and the, the older uh, Indiana Jones epic stunt show, make that an Indiana Jones mini land and it's adjacent right next to Galaxy's Edge, boom, oh. boom, you have Lucasfilm right there. Perfect. <laughs> per that would be perfect. Absolutely perfect. And, and I agree with you. I think it's a fantastic direction. This is a smarter direction for this park to have these immersive environments of, you know, it's still Hollywood. You're still experiencing all these films, but you're experiencing them as they appear in the films. You're not going behind the scenes. It's not movie magic. It's you're living the experience. It's a, it's a brilliant uh, direction for this park, which kind of segues into my next uh, topic, kind of, because I think some of these characters uh, might, actually, uh, ben, you know, might actually show up in Hollywood Studios, and that's the Fox deal, and how um, that might affect Walt Disney World. Do you think we're gonna see because, you know, Fox has a huge, you know, film library. I mean, do you think that we'll see any of those films show up at Disney's Hollywood Studios? For me, I think um, it will play into a strategy. And what I mean by that is starting off, I think the main cause for the Fox deal was to get the Disney streaming service up and running. They have so much content to now build on with Disney+. Plus. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier... I also think that will play a part in getting more Marvel into the parks, especially on the, the East Coast for Walt Disney World. Any content that Disney feels that it wouldn't be appropriate or wouldn't fit into the parks, they can actually, I don't want to use the word bribe, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it, they can possibly make a deal with Universal and say, hey, we have this IP property we can't use. How about a trade? Right, exactly. You know, or something to deal with the uh, the contract itself. Um, I think that could play a major part in as far as more Marvel that can't currently be in the parks, but in the future it could. Now, as far as 
like with uh, James Cameron's Avatar, I completely feel that that's going to blow a whole entire genre of theme park experience that I think that's going to even expand even what's in Animal Kingdom now. And with the four sequels, I believe it is, coming out, there's going to be five movies total. So depending on how well they do at the box office, that could be another whole entire themed land. And I also like the um, that we were talking about this before, that depending on the park, you can have the same IP, but just base it off of what the park stands for. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you could do that. And yeah, you're right. I think, I think the Avatar expansions are coming. I think that's, like you said, it's a given. We have three or four sequels coming out for Avatar. Now they own the property. Um, you know, they might expand Pandora over in Animal Kingdom, but like you said, they might even go into Disney's Hollywood Studios. They might do a whole new land over there and, uh, and flesh, you know, Hollywood Studios out. And I think that would be great too. Um, but I, I agree with you in that I think Fox is, I think the primary focus was the streaming service, but I think there are some properties like Avatar, um, you know, expansion of the Marvel stuff that Disney's really going to capitalize on. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of the X-Men at DCA, things like that, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. As far as, like, with uh, X-Men and the Fantastic Four, I think that would – I think Disney's going to end up rebirthing the franchise <laughs> of X-Men and the Fantastic Four. And hopefully, you know, third time's the charm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for those franchises. But – as kind of going a little bit back on Avatar at the studios, I think it would actually be uh, just within storytelling alone, it would be perfect north east of Galaxy's Edge because then you'll have two entities of being on different planets. So oh, you're right. literally going from one planet to another, even though it's in a different franchise, it would be a nice transition to oh, go yeah. from that to to Pandora. That would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. That, you're right. That's a, that's, a great, that's a great concept. And the transitions for that would be absolutely breathtaking. I could only imagine, you know? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be, uh, that, that would be the cherry on top of uh, the cake with uh, Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I, I think that Walt Disney World is going to benefit a lot more from this Fox deal than Disneyland Resort just because – you guys have the Avatar Foundation already that you can add to and things like that. I think we'll see some Marvel stuff, extra Marvel stuff added to DCA probably. But I think the bulk of the Fox stuff, um, there's more of a home for it over in Florida. So I think you guys will see much more than we will in regards to Fox for sure. Yeah, definitely. On a side note, are you going to subscribe to Disney Plus <laughs> when it comes out? Yes, yes I am. Yeah. I, I already – unsubscribe to netflix so i'm already ready <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> ready to go yes <laughs> I, i'm the same i unsubscribed uh to netflix netflix i mean I, I watched it primarily for the marvel shows they canceled all of them anyway um so i i unsubbed and uh i'm just waiting now for disney plus yeah yeah because they had they had mentioned that there's going to be over a hundred years of disney history and content that's going to be put into this um, so if it's really, truly what they're saying, I could imagine the, Dis the classic animated shorts, the, oh. the TV shows that we grew up on. I I'm a 90s kid. Yeah, yeah. So I was really jealous that you guys, because I wanted to be out there so bad for the uh, 90s night at Disneyland. Oh. I wanted to do that so badly. You have no idea. I hope it comes back because I definitely want to do that. I hope so too. And actually, I, I don't usually do upcharge events. I, I'm not usually interested. And then when I saw the video starting to come out of the Disney Afternoon Fireworks show and all that, I really kicked myself. I'm like, I should have gone. I, it was incredible. Well, I'm the same way. I'm not too big like with the the after dark, you know, things that they have or something extra. But I thought, oh, '90s night, you know, that's up my alley. I was a I was a '90s kid growing yeah. up and everything. And then with the fireworks and then playing the themes from the Disney afternoon. And then with Powerline, I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was incredible. They, they, they nailed it on that event. When Disney gets it right, sometimes they really get it right. 
they got it right on that one for sure. Yes, definitely. For sure. Now, the next thing I really want to talk about, and I think this is interesting, it's the Skyliner for Walt Disney World. And this is, this is big news. This is going to be, I think, um, you know, really a seismic, a seismic uh, shift for the resort. Um, you guys are getting this new transportation, um, this mode of transportation. Um, it's kind of a throwback to the old, you know, the Skyway buckets. What are your thoughts on it? What are your feelings on it? Well, when they first announced that they were doing the Skyliner at the Expo, um, I believe it was the, yeah, it was the very last Expo. And I can't believe of how exciting it was, but at the same time, so much controversy that has come in with this. It, is there going to be air condition or what do you do with there's going to be storms and what if you know the power goes out and how many people can fit on it you know what if it breaks up what if this and that and it's like wow it's like with adding the media into the mix of everything i it, i just can't believe how it's like night and day when disney first released something and it's like okay well we'll check it out we'll give it a chance and then with with facebook facebook and facebook and twitter and twitter and the Skyliner. Um, I actually, they just released um, compliments to the Diz, the Diz Unplugged, that they had released a, um, it's like a five second little video on Twitter that the uh, Skyliner uh, was up and running full blast and they, they were moving. Like they, they don't, they don't mess around. I mean, you can see <laughs> those, those puppies moving from point A to point B. And, um, they did say that, well, I don't think Disney has officially confirmed this, but it's Disney, and you have to take in consideration, they're all about guest safety. They ha It's Florida, so oh, there's going to be fire. rain, there's going to be storms. They're prepared for something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I am actually was very interested in the, the concept of the cars themselves, the, the buckets, so to speak of how they incorporated the Disney characters with the colors. And uh, my co-host, uh, Jason, said that he would literally have people pass him up and he will literally wait there until he gets on the, the car that has the hitchhiking ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's you awesome. Know, you know, I think I, this I is think gonna be a great addition to Walt Disney World. Personally, I'm claustrophobic. I'll never go on it. I'll never go on it. <laughs> but I, I think but it's going to be really I fun. Be I think fun. it's going to be a great, it's a um, great um, way to get great. around the resort. And, uh, you know, I think it's a big plus for the, for the whole Walt Disney World Resort. The one worry I did have, though, when they announced it was I was worried because Chapek is kind of, you know, eh, he's kind of iffy. Where, you know, everyone kind of questions him a little bit. And, you know, I do too a little uh, from time to time. And I hope, my only fear is I hope this isn't like a way that he can kind of kick the can down the road to fix the monorails. You know, I think you guys really need those new monorails. And I hope he doesn't think like, well, we have a Skyliner now. We don't need to fix them. He still that, needs to fix them. Yeah, I hope he does. That, that was my main concern that when, because at the expo, I didn't attend the last expo. I, however, I am going to this upcoming summer's expo. I'm really excited about that. And, but the last expo, I watched it, uh, I think it was through a live stream. And they, when they announced the Skyliner, the first thing that popped into my head was, was this a way to get people's attention off the monorail because during that time the our, especially our monorail it there's so much that needs to be worked on it so so much and just like with you i have that concern is is the monorail just going to wilt it's just going to keep going until it just works no more and if it breaks down they say oh well we have the skyliner you know but as far as on a positive note, it's great for the resort itself. With Galaxy's Edge opening, uh, the expansion of Epcot, Walt Disney World's 50th on the horizon, that in the next few years, the resort is going to be even more jam-packed than what it already is. Oh, yeah. So have an extra transportation system 
is definitely <laughs> is in the best interest of the resort. Absolutely. And now on a somewhat of a negative side, as far as like the individual hotels, because it goes, it's more so primarily in the center of the resort where you kind of go back and forth between Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Pop Century, Art of Animation, uh, the new DVC resort, uh, Riviera. So I think possibility down the road that the resorts that carry the, uh, the Skylift may see an increase in room rates. Because yeah. now they have an extra mode of transportation that someone staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge or the Grand Floridian or the Contemporary, they wouldn't have that. Oh yeah. Disney's gonna mar Disney's gonna Disney's gonna market that as a plus for staying there. And they, I think they will definitely charge you more uh for that skyliner access. I mean it's the Disney way. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's the Disney way. I mean it's a convenience though. It really is, but it, yeah. they're gonna charge you for it. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's it's still business. They have to do what they got to do. They have to market it. They have to get revenue. And, you know, it, it's not going to come to a, a surprise to me if they do it. You know, there's going to be people, you know, blowing up the Internet saying, how could Disney do this? And I wasn't expecting it. It's like, really? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, what a shock. Disney's trying to get more money from me. What a shock, you know? That's funny. Yeah, no, it's going to happen. It will definitely happen. It, it, it has a stop at the Pop Century Resort, right? That's one of the stops. Yeah, it's going to be where you can get it between Pop Century and Art of Animation because there's a bridge that connects both resorts. Because Art of Animation was supposed to be a phase two of Pop Century. Oh. And then after 9-11 um, happened, everything got put on hold. Everything, and then they just canceled the project and that land sat there up until the point where they decided to just add a whole nother resort. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe um, the one who tells the best story of the history of Pop Century and then Art of Animation is uh, Rob Plays. So a shout out to Rob because he gives some of the best uh, Disney history of where it went, where it's going, and how it became. Wow. So, I mean, cool. if you check him out, uh, Rob plays on YouTube. He gives very interesting Disney content. Awesome. Awesome. So, one last question, and then this is the last question, and then we'll, then we'll go. Um, what are your thoughts on IP in the park, but more specifically for Epcot? Because I know it's, it's more – it's a more it's a more uh, contentious argument when you when people start talking about Epcot. How do you feel about them adding more, you know, uh, franchises and stuff into that park? Do you support it? Do you not like it? What are your thoughts on that? I was praying you were going to ask me because <laughs> I have a huge opinion on this, and I see people talking about it, writing about it, you know, tweeting it, you know, everything of just, I'll start off with this and then I'll move into the Epcot part is okay. just as the IPs in general, where people say there's too much IPs. Why not go back to the traditional, the way Walt had it, the way Walt had it. It's original. If they decide to do so, it would be great. And I think not to stir up any controversy or nothing, but this is my interpretation of what I thought Bob Iger was saying in the original tweet, is children nowadays have their thing of their favorites, of what they can relate to, of what they can adapt to. And to grab a child's attention, and again, with Disney, it's about marketing. It's about getting people there. It's about getting the turnstiles running. It's about getting those rooms filled up, getting as many people as they can in the park as possible. For a child that watches these movies, that fall in love with these characters, what would excite a child more that would convince their parents to spend thousands of dollars to go on a Disney vacation? Would it be going through the mine of the seven dwarfs singing hi-ho, you know, seeing Snow White in the cottage, dancing with the dwarfs, or would it be a mountain? Exactly. You yeah. know, yeah. I, again, now, 
don't get me wrong, Expedition Everest is one of my all-time favorite rides of Walt Disney World. I love it. I just, I, I'm a thrill junkie. What could I say? <laughs> but, <laughs> but just as a company standpoint, I can see where Bob Iger was going with the tweet. And I just think it got lost in translation. People took their own spin on it, and that's what happened with that. As far as the IPs themselves, what people saying just in general, less IPs, more traditional the way Walt would want it. And this stumbled into my head the other night when I was thinking of what we were going to be discussing. And I thought, back when Walt was alive and he was running Disneyland, he didn't have the content that they have now. He was limited to what he had to use. And what did he use? He used what was popular at the time. Right. Davy Crockett. Frontierland. Exactly. The True Life Adventure Series. For the Jungle Cruise, for Adventureland. That still has a representation. So technically, if you really think about it, there really isn't too much of originality based on what Walt had, if you really go back and watch his content. And with him saying, let's keep moving forward, we just keep going, you can't look back. I honestly think, and I may get some heat for this, I think that if Walt had all this content, he would be using it like crazy. I completely agree, George. I completely agree. And we also have to remember, you know, people like to think that, like, it's Uncle Walt, and he ran this little independent film company and didn't like to promote things or market things. This is a man that built the Disneyland Sleeping Beauty Castle and named it after a film that was coming out in four years. You know, Sleeping Beauty wasn't coming out until 1959. And for that synergy he named it after that film to promote it, you know, years in advance. This man not only liked IP and, you know, but he like pioneered the art form almost. I mean, this is a man that really pushed it, you know, in terms of the marketing and what, how we currently, you know, uh, it really, he really changed the game in terms of franchises. And uh, these, a lot of people, a lot of critics that say that he, he really wouldn't have liked it. I, I completely disagree with them. I think that he has fully supported it and he embraced it. I mean, obviously he wasn't at the level that we are now, but I think, like you said, I think he would be had he lived to 2019. I mean, he was not shy about pushing his brand. You know, I mean, this man invented the art form. And you, um, going back and watching some of your videos, you said it to where I've never thought of it that way, but it, it makes perfect sense when you, and I'm quoting you, that, <laughs> that you said he did not want it to be a museum. Right. Exactly. And if it is left that way, that's exactly what it's going to be. Right. That Disney is creating this content, and it's just like with Frozen. Frozen became a phenomenon out of nowhere. No one ever thought it was going to become what it was. Of course, Disney is going to capital on it. Exactly. They're going to throw it in the parks, you know? But going to your question of Epcot, I think Disney is doing it right as far as with Epcot goes because they're throwing the Disney brand into the mix of what Epcot is all about, still keeping with the traditional of how Walt wanted it, Unfortunately, the original plan for it to be a, a city, a city community of tomorrow, obviously that didn't work because of his unfortunate passing. But just based on the park of what his vision was to represent, you know, different cultures, you know, different people, the aesthetics of around being around the world using technology of how he would want his community of tomorrow to be. It's still very much represented. And now with the new entrance way that we talked about, they're getting more greenery. It's going to have that sort of like, as I said, that Grand Central Park feel. So it still has that home base of a community. But at the same time, they're branding their product, their material in a way where it benefits the park, but it also benefits the guests at the same time. 
such as the Ratatouille attraction that's coming from Disneyland Paris. It fits well in the France Pavilion. So it's marketing as a, what kids would adore is Ratatouille, because I'm for sure every child out there knows the movie of Ratatouille, but it also still depicts of the French culture. You know, you, you still have the, the French restaurants, you still have the backdrop of the Eiffel Tower. So it's, it's harmonizing both aspects of the company for Epcot, because I think Epcot really does need some IPs, because out of the four parks, I would say Epcot was crippled in that way of getting children into the park, and I think this way it's a better marketing strategy to get kids and families into the park to kind of have a full day. Exactly. And that, that's, I completely agree with you. And, and, and uh, you know, I think as long as they're adding the, the franchises in, in a respectful way that fits the theme of, you know, where it's going, like you said, the, the Ratatouille attraction is going in the France pavilion. Makes sense. I, you know, it, it's being done in a respectful way. I would even argue even, you know, Frozen Ever After in the Norway Pavilion is, is perfectly fine. I mean, technically, yeah, Frozen didn't take place in Norway, but it was so heavily inspired by the country. I mean, down to the, I mean, if you look at the architecture and, and the clothing and the music and every, I mean, it basically was Norway without saying it was Norway, right? I mean, exactly. it, was, it was so heavily inspired by the country. I think it's still respectful to have that franchise in that pavilion. So yeah, I think they're doing fine. As long as they, they manage to, you know, pick franchises that can, you know, tie in respectively to the park. I have no problem with that. You know, I, I think they're doing so far, knock on wood, <laughs> a good job with that. So, and I think they'll continue. I think, I think that they understand that they, they can't go too far off, you know, the beaten path. So I think it'll be okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, George. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me on. It was a blast. I love talking Disney. <laughs> it, it was my pleasure. Love to have you back on again. We'll talk more Disney. Um, again, you guys, uh, this is George Falcione from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I'm going to link all of his information um, in the description. Um, so make sure you, get, you check them out. Give them a subscribe. Again, thank you so much, George. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Have a great day, man. You too. Thank you.